Hello there. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, it's Sid from Partridge Exterior Cleaning. Um, I'm going to do a little talking video today. Um, I've got five things that I've thought of and written down, um, and this is basically going to be how to turn quotes into actual jobs. Um, because a lot of people, they'll get tons of quotes in, they might have a really good advert, they'll get loads of quotes coming in, and thinking, oh, brilliant, let's go. And then out of all of those quotes, they get one job or sometimes not even one job. It seems like everyone that you're talking to just says, no, too expensive, doesn't respond to your message. Um, yeah, just bears no interest once you've said your price um, or even just a bit of information. They just tune out and stop responding. Um, so, yeah, I've got five things written down, so I'll just go through them. It'll be quite a quick video, I think. I'll try not ramble too much and keep it short and sweet. Um, but all five of these things is what I try to do every single time. Um, and I found that. Um, with my roof cleaning work, with my gutter cleaning work, driveways, um, it, it all skyrocketed since I started doing everything sort of every time. I used to usually do sort of like one of these things and then the other four things I just don't really bother but I've started doing everything and it's really helped me so it'll probably really help you as well. Um, this will apply to window cleaning as well um, but window cleaning is a little bit easier, you know, you usually just say a price but because it's only quite cheap um, anyway, it's like 15, 20 quid, um, you'll usually get more Yes, is anyway with window cleaning quotes when they come in. Um, but this is more sort of aimed at bigger money jobs, you know, going from 200 quid up to 1500 quid and, and on, onwards, really. So, yeah, I'll get started. So, the very first one is always visit the property. So, you've got a Facebook ad running or a Google ad, and someone's called you up or sent you a message saying, Oh, can I have a quote for this? The first thing you need to do is visit that property and see it in person. Um, personal interaction will build trust with that customer. Um, but before that you go and see them and meet them and shake their hand or, um, you know, say hello, uh, you're just a faceless name. You're just a faceless company. They have no idea who you are. So they've got no reason to trust you. So if you're sending off a, a quote uh, over Facebook for 700 quid, 9.9 um, .9 times out of 10, you're probably going to get a no. Um, or a, a non-responsive sort of answer, you know, you won't get an answer at all. Um, or it'll be like, eh, I'll think about it. Now, you could visit that person in property, say the exact same price, and you might get it. There's a much higher chance that you'll get it. Um, and it's happened to me loads. A lot of the time when I was quoting online, I was thinking, am I too expensive? Because, you know, they're all saying no. And then I spoke to someone, he said, no, you should always go and visit, if possible, you know, if it's an hour away. You know, if unless the job's like worth a couple of grand, it's probably not worth the time. Um, but if it's 20 minutes down the road and it could be a 500 pound job, you know, even a 300 pound job, you know, there's no point not to go and see it. And also this helps with a bit of bargaining as well, because there's going to be some people out there that are sort of going to try their luck a little bit um, and get you to lower your price. Now that's fine, especially if you're just starting out, if you want to be a bit flexible on your price, um, there's no reason not to. Um, so you rock up and you, you quote a thousand pounds for a, a roof clean. And they say, oh, that's a bit more than I was expecting. You go, you know what, um, if you can keep me in mind for recommendations, if you can speak to your neighbours for me, you know, any, you know, things like that, if you can give me a, a good review, um, pass the word around, I'll do it for 850, I'll do it for 900. And they might go, you know what, we've got a deal, there we go. Um, I've done that quite a few times. Now, over Facebook or over Google or texting, WhatsApp, you can't really barter, you know, and the customer can't barter either. They sort of think like, you know, they don't really know you, they haven't got that feel for you in person, so they'll probably just go no thanks um, and try and find a cheaper quote elsewhere. Whereas if you're there in person, they might try and get a slightly cheaper quote from you. You know, they might want it for, you know, a thousand pound job, they might want it for 750. You get, you might be able to swing it for 850, you know, if you really need the work. So yeah, tip number one, always visit in person, get to know the customer, have a good chat with them, uh, just be friendly. And you can see things in, you know, especially with the bigger jobs as well. It's really important to go and have a look because you could quote, you know, seven, eight hundred pound turn up and it's a fifteen hundred pound job because you've only seen it, you know, how it looked ten years ago on Google Maps. So yeah, check it out in person. Right, so I've had to uh about to run upstairs into a room and hide out up here to make this video because it's impossible to get any quiet when there's two kids in the house. Um yeah, so the second point is pre qualifying um the work. Um this is really, really important to do. Um a lot of people forget to ask the customer what actually do you want. Um, so say you get your roof job come in, you know, do they want a brand new looking roof or do they just want the moss gone? Is it a cosmetic thing that they're worried about or is it the health of the roof or is it both? Um, because it's two very different jobs. 
Um, so a lot of people end up getting stung or they put a wrong quote in. They might put a really expensive quote in. Same for driveways as well. You know, does this person want a full blitz of their driveway and all the edge in a really fancy job done? Um, you know, uh, bleach put down, you know, hypo to get every single spot off, a biocide put down afterwards to make sure nothing starts growing back sort of anytime soon. Um, or have they just got some family coming over next weekend and they just want a quick clean? Um, a lot of people will only offer like a, a superb five star service, but those people you're potentially missing out on a lot of work if you're struggling to get work in because some people just want a nice, easy job doing. They just want a quick clean of the driveway. Um, they just want the moss removed from their roof. They're not interested in having it, um, you know, hypoed afterwards and like all sorts of things to make it look brand new. They literally just want the moss gone because they're worried that. Uh, the gutters are getting clogged every five minutes, so it's a scrape and treat of the roof, simple as. So rounding that off, it's sort of covering yourself both ways. You're pre-qualifying the job, you're understanding exactly their needs, um, and you're also giving them a chance to choose between two options from you. Because if you don't explain the options and how that you do how you do the job, um, they they might think that you're charging 350 quid for a driveway that's just a bog standard clean like. Bob does over the road with his carcher on his own driveway. They don't understand that you might be using specialist equipment, applying certain chemicals, you know, blah, 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 the list goes on. So you'll have the option then and be like, yeah, this is the way I do it. This is the way I prefer to do it. Um, but if it really is just a quick clean you want, I can give it a quick once over um, for this price, you know, and then some most of the time they might go for that price, which is a win-win. So. so point number three is getting your face out there um, and getting videos of your work if you're not comfortable with really showing your face. But I would highly recommend it um, because they then they can sort of see who they're speaking to. So if they come in for, for a quote off one of your before and after pictures, look on your page, you know, there might be a picture of you at work like, hey, you know, it's me. Um, or there might be a video of you uh, cleaning out some guttering or scraping a roof or doing a driveway. Um, and they see an actual person then, so they can sort of gauge who they're speaking to instead of it just being a faceless company, um, like our rounded about in point one. Um, it's a good way to sort of, before you've even met the customer, to sort of get more of a personal touch with them and they'll sort of put the face to the name of who they're speaking to. Um, and even if any, any of you are comfortable with it, if you've got family, things like that, you know, even a picture of your kid with like a work top on you know just things like that you I see it all the time like even a picture of like someone's daughter or son holding a waterfed pole and the customers think that's a family man I can trust that person um or a family woman um you know it gives more of a a personal touch and a friendly touch um to your work um and I do all the time I use the videos that I make um a select few of them that are more personal with me not me sort of teaching people information it'd be just quick roundabout sort of time lapses of my work and someone comes in and asks me for a quote I'll say yeah blah 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 if I've visited the property or if it's a, an hour away or more and I haven't visited it um, I'll send over all the information I can and then I'll attach a video um, or a link to a video um, within my quote just so they can see me and me working so they know who they're speaking to they know how the work gets done um, so they can have a quick watch they might at first think oh god that's pricey and then they watch the video and they see the amount of work that goes into it I see you slogging all day, scraping a roof or, um, yeah, how difficult some of these jobs can be. And they go, ah, okay, that actually kind of, kind of looks worth the price. So instead of just a typical, here's the before, here's the after, they get the full spectrum of the job and they can sort of understand it. Um, yeah, that's something I really hi highly recommend. Videos, 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 um, and pictures of you at work. Um, yeah, it really, it's really helped me out, massively helped me out. Right then, this one is number four, I think. I think it's four. Um, another super important one, which is why it's on the list, uh, staying in touch. This is more geared to after you've got the job, after a quote's come in and you've got it. I find, and it's happened to me before, um, that you might have a job booked in for two weeks down the line, maybe three weeks down the line. Um, and you're none the wiser, you're, you know, you're a busy guy, so you're at work every day, you're not really thinking about it. And then it gets to two days before the job's done and you go, all right, that one's booked in for this day. I'll give them a message. So you send them a message and you go, hi, you know, it's so-and-so um, just confirming that I'll be round at nine o'clock in the morning to do your gutters on Friday. And there's no reply. The next day goes by, there's still no reply. And then you sort of get and think, man, that's a time slot that could have been used for someone else. So you message them, messaging them again, still no reply. And you think, damn, you know, oh, and you think it's the customer's fault. It's half the customer's fault for not sticking to their word, but it's half your fault as well for not checking in. You've probably left it two to three weeks 
after you had that first handshake or that first agreement and you haven't spoken to them, you haven't followed up, you haven't checked in, you haven't, you know, sort of made them aware because they might have even forgot about it and something's came up in life, you know, they might have had to get a new tyre for the car and it's cost them 80 quid, which is what you were charging to do the gutter in and they had to do that the day before. So now I think, oh, I don't want to be down another 80 quid. I'll, I'll leave it, I won't bother. Um, yeah, so that ha that's happened to me before. It's happened probably to a lot of you as well. It's just, you're like, oh, it's a no-show, great. So what I'd really highly recommend is once that first job is booked in, um, leave it a few days. So say you've booked it in for two weeks away. Leave it a few days and just check in and say, um, you know, hi, um, you're on the list now. I'm just confirming this booking once again um, that I'll be around at this time, this time. Just like a double confirmation in a sense. Even though you haven't, you've already confirmed it. It's just speaking to them. Um, or if it's safe, it's a roof job. Just say, by the way, um, chemicals have all been delivered. All the supplies have been delivered for the job. So I'll just confirm it. That I'll be with you in two weeks time. So then that sort of puts a bit of more ease on the customer's mind. They know that you definitely come in. And then usually a week before you do the job, I recommend messaging one more time and just say, hi, Sally, just to let you know, um, weather's looking good, schedule's looking good. I'll definitely be around on Thursday. Or you could say, if you're a bit busy and things have been pushed back, just say, is it okay if we do Friday? You know, just make it up as you go along. Never go more than a week without messaging the customer. It's like a cardinal sin for me um, because I've lost a lot of jobs. Um, and then you start thinking about it. You go, oh man, I haven't spoken to them for a few weeks. And then you're worried then. It's like, are they still going to be around? You know, it's a thousand pound job. I really want to do that job. Then you message them, get no reply and you're kicking yourself. So stay in touch with the customers. Right then, so fifth and final point, um, educate the customer. Really, really try and educate the customer. If you think that you're being boring and sort of like saying too much, you're not. You can never really say too much. Um, it doesn't make you look desperate if you know what you're talking about, if you know what I mean. If you're there chewing, chewing their ear off in person um, and you can see you're losing them, then that's just a people skill. You sort of know when to stop. But online when you're sending a quote over send all the information possible so if you're using chemicals send the data sheets over um, so that they can have a read and understand how the chemical works so even though you've explained it you know like with biocide oh it could take 18 months for it to fully work on a roof um, or get the full result on a roof you might say that to the customer and it might lose them and they might be like god that's a long time but if they read the data sheet and it says it on the thing from an official company they might be a bit more like oh okay i understand now so instead of just saying, oh, it's going to take X amount of time to do this, this, this and this, send it over to them in a professional format that the suppliers have written up straight from their website. Um, there's millions of them if you just search the companies for the chemicals that you're using. Um, this is why you should only use licensed products that are right for the job as well, um, because you get all this information free with it. you know. And secondly, with the education, explain why you do a job a certain way. Uh, if you're scraping and treating a roof, why are you doing it that way? Why are you not pressure washing the roof? Um, if you're cleaning some windows, why are you doing it traditional and not water fed pole or vice versa? You know, if you're traditional, it could be, oh, um, I prefer doing it the old fashioned way, getting up close to the windows. I find it gives it a better finish, blah, 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 blah. If you're doing it water fed pole, going safer, find it gives it a better finish. You know, it all, you know, we all do the, the jobs, don't we? So, um, and we all know that any job can be as good as any other one if it's done correctly. Um, but explain why you're doing things a certain way. You're saying if you're doing some guttering with a gutter vac, explain why you're using a gutter vac, why you use that tool. Um, and it all helps. It all helps the customer sort of understand, you know, oh, this is a guy that knows what he's talking about. This is a company that seems legit. You know, it looks like they take pride in the work. They've almost bored me to death, basically. So, yeah, just crack on with the job and I'll pay you when you finish kind of thing. Um, education is really important. So, yeah, so with the education, just come setting yourself apart from the rest of them, basically. Um, of all the other average shows that are doing the job. I, I think I offended a few people in one of my videos previously when I mentioned window cleaning as anyone can clean a window, um, you know, which is true, but it takes a long time to become a specialist. It takes someone with dedication to the job of any job to become a specialist at it um, and to become a you know true professional at that craft. Um, and that's what you need to be sort of putting forward in your quotes and when you're speaking to customers. And it's all customer management and things like that. Um, you know, to set yourself apart from the bloke that they've received a cheaper quote for, you know, why would they want to go with you if you're charging £25 for a house for the windows when there's a guy charging £18? You know, they'll go with you if you're more professional and they feel like they can trust you on their property and on their investment, which is their windows. So um, there's always going to be people that go for the cheaper option, don't get me wrong, you cannot win every single customer.
but the customers that you want are the customers that want the best work, not the cheapest work. Um, so that's my best sort of advice for uh, getting more quotes in, out, well, getting more jobs in out of your quotes and confirming these these jobs, turning them into yeah, actual work. So I hope that uh, has helped some people out there. If it has um, and you find any success with any of these things, you don't have to do all of them. Just try one of them and see if it works out for you. Um, but if you find any success, let me know. Um, this will be sort of, there's not really much for me to talk about on the side of business now in terms of sort of getting more jobs and stuff. The only thing I could really go through would be marketing and how to get more jobs. But that's not something that you can really put out there because everyone's different. Everyone does things differently. But also, if everyone started doing what I'm doing, then it wouldn't work as well for me. So it's not the sort of thing you can just put willy nilly on the Internet. Is um oh yeah if everyone does this you'll get loads of jobs because I need jobs myself so it's you know it's one of them but um but I'm always there to help people out so if anyone's struggling with anything do let me know um and yeah and if any of these things work for you uh, give me a shout so yeah hope you've enjoyed the video um there should be some roof cleaning videos coming up um in the next week I've got two quite big jobs to do so they'll make a nice video um and apart from that yeah just keep going as we're going hope everyone has uh, been enjoying the weather the past few days. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a good year. So yeah, peace.